Guys, I am making this disclaimer before we start because I don't want to waste 15 minutes of your time. I was filming this video as I was proceeding with the project and I've published the results as it is. The results are not something that I was expecting. But I've learned a few things while I was making this project. You can skip this video if you want to, but I would expect you to watch it fully and give me some inputs so that I can make it better the next time I try it. Hi guys, I'm Josh and welcome to my channel video Epo. I live on a top of a hill and I think I've mentioned that in my earlier videos too. This mountain is called as a Charnoket mountain and don't ask me what that is because I had to do a little bit of a Google search even to say that. Whenever I dig my garden while I'm doing gardening, I find a lot of rocks and less of soil and I could not help but notice that these rocks are really brittle. They break very easily and can be crushed into a powder form very easily. These rocks break in in separate layers and in between those layers is a layer of a brownish black substance. I was really curious about what this black substance in this rock is and here is a neodymium magnet and it's looking red in color that's because I've taped it with the red insulation tape and if I put the magnet on top of the rock it kind of stick to it. See? But when I try that with some more rocks nothing happened. This falls off. I was really curious about what this thing is. Some of the rocks get attracted and some don't. Like this one has got a little bit of a magnetic pull. My quest for this video is, will I be able to separate the content inside these rocks which is magnetic? And if it is iron oxide, will I be able to turn that into iron? I've seen a lot of videos where people use uh, cornflakes powder and they crush apples to extract iron from it. Now this process is going to be a lot more difficult than compared to that. But like I always say, trying is an option I cannot ignore. Now, if this is not the typical content that you consume, you can always watch my other videos. I try a lot of different things. Welcome back guys. When I wanted to try this experiment, I did a little bit of a Google search and I found a video by Cody's lab, the links of which will be given in the description below. It answered all of my questions and let's get to work. And the first thing that I'm going to do now is to crush all of these rocks. I've been crushing these rocks into a powder form for a couple of hours now. I was really curious if at all there is iron present in it and let me tell you that I'm not disappointed. There are traces of iron present in this powder form that we've obtained from crushing these rocks. Guys, I think I have enough uh, powder. I mean, I've crushed enough rocks to get the material that I needed for this project. Now, there is a little bit of a difference in terms of the weight, uh, the end result of the weight because I think I should have weighed the rocks before I started the project. But then the question was not to find out how much of iron is present inside a rock. The question was to find out if there is iron present at all. Some of you might be curious, some of you might be doubtful and you might say that I've added some sort of uh, iron fillings in this but uh, let me ask you this question. Why will I do that? I mean these are rocks found inside my garden and I will be really happy to send it across to you if your doubt is not cleared, uh, if customs doesn't have a problem with that. The next thing we are going to do is to add water and make this into a slurry and in this process what happens is the heavier particles settle down to the bottom and the lighter particles they float up and they can be washed away and to speed up the process I am going to attach a magnet in the bottom so that the uh, iron is getting attracted and settled down to the bottom. We've managed to extract the iron compound from the rocks and hopefully that is iron oxide. The next component that we would need would be carbon for which I'm going to use charcoal which is a good source of carbon. Cody in his video used limestones and I don't even know how that looks like. Wikipedia says it is rich in calcium carbonate which happens to be in eggshells and sea gels as well. I have some of those and I'm going to grind it to powder. So we have three components here, one is the iron compound that we obtained by crushing the rocks and we have 
charcoal which is going to be the source of carbon and we also have calcium carbonate which we obtained by crushing eggshells and seashells. This recipe is something that I saw on Cody's video, I am simply going to follow the thing and I am going to mix all of these things together and pour it into this small cup which is going to be my crucible. Hope it works. Posing with a cup like this might look like a cheesy Indian coffee ad but uh, the recipe that I prepared just now is inside this cup and I'm going to cook it. By cooking I mean that it has to be heated more than a temperature of 2000 or even 3000 degrees centigrade for which we need a furnace. I don't have a furnace so I'm going to make one. The outside temperature is about 35 degrees centigrade and it is really hot. Getting back to the subject, I've got to find a way to quickly make a furnace and digging my garden for clay or soil doesn't make any sense because I'll be finding more of rocks. So what I've got here is a little bit of construction sand, plaster of Paris and sawdust that has been filled in the boxing bag. I'm going to mix all of these things together and pour it into a mold. I'm going to make this furnace upside down and flip it later. Now this hollow chamber is going to be where all the charcoal and all the flammable material will be placed. So this is going to be the inner chamber. And since that part is going to be the opening, I'm going to add a little bit of sand and get it secured in its place. Plaster of Paris begins to harden up quickly, so it is better to mix this stuff in small batches. The small one I'm making here is the lid for the furnace. Although Plaster of Paris hardens up quickly, there is sand and sawdust in the mixture and therefore I thought it would be wise to let it dry for a day. Normally in any DIY cold fed furnace, the outer shell is made with a metal container, maybe a metal drum or a metal bucket. And that is because the material that we use to line the interior of the forge, uh, in this case plaster of Paris as well as sand, it might be good in thermal insulation properties but it is not a very good building material which means it can crack and break under high heat. I did not have a metal drum so I went with this plastic bucket. I was hoping that I will be able to save this plastic bucket, it turns out that I cannot. And I wanted to give the reinforcement by using a brick wall after I remove this bucket. It seems there is no other option but to cut this bucket open. I am going to sacrifice this bucket and we will call this collateral damage maybe. Let's pour a little bit of kerosene to, to get the fire going. There. Seems like the vacuum cleaner is a terrible idea because it's throwing away a lot of fire. The cup with the mixture we had prepared goes into the furnace. The vacuum cleaner was spewing out fire everywhere so I had to switch to the hand crank blower. The closing of this video could have been disappointing but 
it is disappointing but not as much when the furnace was going well i wanted to check what is happening inside the furnace so i removed the lid and in the process i broke the lid the glass is broken inside i tried to adjust the cup that i placed inside i broke the cup too now i had no other option but to cover the furnace with a couple of bricks and i went on After an hour, I tried to examine what is happening inside the furnace, and again I found that the contents in the cup were missing, and there was no way to visually examine what is happening inside because of the high heat it was throwing. It was getting dark, so I called it a day and I shut shop. I'm looking for any lump, any small little piece of metal that I could find, but I don't think I'm going to find anything there. Next morning, I had this thought. Where could the material inside the furnace have possibly gone? I started digging inside the furnace. I found a blob and it was getting attracted to the magnet. But it did not feel any heavy. It was brittle like glass and maybe this could be the slug. I found a few more nuggets but they were all the same. With all my hopes diminished, I still did a check with file and this is how it sounds like. There were some tiny shiny stuff but it could be glass. I try to see if they generate spark but no they don't There are so many things that could have gone wrong in this experiment I have showed you some and I have made a list of few more I would really like to know what you think about this project and if you have any suggestions or ideas please leave them in the comment section below I am really looking forward to those things All of this thing happened because of a simple and a curious question do the rocks in my garden have the presence of iron and this whole experiment was a really good fun All is not lost now I know how to extract a little bit of iron compound from the rocks I find from my garden and I've also made a furnace which I had been procrastinating for quite a while now this furnace it might not be good enough to melt iron but it is good enough for my forthcoming iron smithing projects if you're still watching this video you're amazing hats off for you have ultimate patience thank you for watching this video for so long I'll be back with another interesting video very soon until then bye guys you can click on the box on the top and it will take you to another crazy experiment like this and the bottom box is what youtube thinks is good on my channel by clicking on the channel logo it will take you to the subscription page and guys thank you for being here i'll see you around